All right, guys, welcome back to another unit on the gas laws. This is a continuing set of lectures revolving around the gas laws. So in our previous lecture, we talked about units that are going to be involved with gas laws, and that, that can include pressure, volume, temperature, a constant, which we're going to learn about more here, and then moles. So those are the important pieces or moving variables that you're going to need when you're dealing with the gas laws. So today, I figured we would take some time to talk about the simple gas laws. And all of these are going to culminate into what's known as the ideal gas law at the end. Uh, so we're going to run through the simple gas laws, show how they play into the ideal gas law. And then we'll do one or two practice problems regarding the simple gas laws. They are very easy. Um, the ideal gas law is easy, too. But the simple gas laws are very easy. They're just basic algebra that you need to use. So let's talk about them. There's three major simple gas laws that we refer to. And the first one is Boyle's gas law. And what Robert Boyle proposed was that pressure times volume is equal to a constant. Now, there's conditions along with this, and that is that moles, which we'll represent with a n, as we talked about in last lecture, moles will be held constant and temperature will be held constant. So what Boyle proposes is that if the moles in your gas uh, solution or gas mixture are held constant and the temperature is held constant for that gas, then pressure and volume will always equal a constant. And so if you look at this, when we have a multiplication, pressure times volume, this is an inverse relationship. So what that means is as pressure goes up, the volume must go down. And as volume goes up, the pressure must go down. And that makes sense. If you think about a balloon, right? If I were to fill a balloon up with air, and then I were to increase the pressure. So imagine I'm holding it between my hands, and then I apply a lot of pressure towards it. As I apply that pressure between my hands, the volume, the amount of space that the air has to take up, starts decreasing. So I'm increasing the pressure by applying it between my hands. And as I'm increasing that pressure more and more, I'm squeezing the volume down to a very tiny space until eventually it would pop, because a balloon is not a uh, solid container by any means. So what we have is pressure times volume. They're an inverse relationship. And they will equal a constant, given moles are constant and temperature is constant. And we're going to see that through all the simple gas laws. That there has to be some constants that are being held, and then others that can move, so the open variables, which in this case are pressure and volume. Now, we can extract Boyle's law if we know that pressure and volume are always constant for a given gas at a constant set of moles and temperature. Then that means that pressure 1 and volume 1 should equal pressure 2 and volume 2, provided that we hold them constant, the, the moles and the temperature. So I can have an, an initial pressure and volume reading, and I only need one of these two, pressure 2 or volume 2, and I should be able to figure out the other one algebraically. So that's Boyle's law. Charles' gas law relates volume and temperature. So here we're going to have the pressure as a constant, and we're also going to have n, the moles again, as a constant. So if we look at a gas that's filling up a certain volume at a given temperature, provided the pressure and the moles are constant, we see that the volume is going to be directly proportional to the temperature. So the pressure times volume back in Boyle's law was inversely proportional. Now, as volume goes up, temperature must go up. As volume goes down, temperature must go down. And they'll equal a constant, just like we saw with Boyle's law. And we can, again, extract this. We get volume 1 over temperature 1. If I change either the volume or the temperature, I should be able to figure out the other missing piece, given that both of these hold as a constant. So the last one is Avogadro's gas law. And Avogadro's gas law is going to relate the volume and the moles. And so here, the pressure and the temperature are both 
the constant that we're using. So when we look at volume and moles, or molar volume, this is sometimes called, we're looking at a direct relationship again, and that makes sense because moles is related back to grams or the amount of substance we have. And it makes sense that we say the more moles of gas we have, the more volume they're going to occupy because we're stuffing more and more gas molecules into a given space. That space at some point is going to have to expand to accommodate all of those gas molecules. So Avogadro's law says volume and moles are going to lead to a constant. Again, same premise. If I have an initial set of volume and moles, I only need one of the second volume or the second moles, and I can find the other one out. Now, we did talk about in the previous lesson that uh, volume, when it's standardized for one mole of any gas, is equal to 22.4 liters. So that's at STP, which we also talked about, standard temperature and pressure. So at one atmosphere, at zero degrees Celsius, or 273.15 Kelvin, one mole of gas will take up 22.4 liters. And that's going to be important because that's going to define the constant a little later. So let's bring this together. We've got the ideal gas law. This is the one most students are familiar with. PV equals NRT. So where exactly does the ideal gas law come from? Well, we know that Boyle said P and V are going to be equal to some constant. Right? And then we know that Charles said V over T is equal to some constant. So V next to P, I can put a T underneath the V and I get PV over T equals a constant. And then Avogadro stated that V over N is going to be equal to some constant. And so if V again is on top, I can put N on the bottom. I get PV over NT equals a constant. And we define that constant, we give it the letter R when we're dealing with the gas laws. And so if I say that PV over NT equals R, I can algebraically rearrange this by multiplying each side through by NT, which would bring it over here, and I would get PV equals NRT. And what the ideal gas law states is that pressure times volume is going to be equal to the moles of gas present at the temperature of that gas times some constant. And the constant R, when we use R, is equal to 0. Point, and it depends how many decimals you take it out to, 0. 0.8206. That's a bad six, so let me write it back down here. 0. 0.8206. All right. Now, some people say 0 0.0821, they round up, that's perfectly fine. We're going to talk about R a little bit more in the next lecture and why it is that value, because certain units are built into it, and when we start using the ideal gas law, the pressure, volume, and temperature are all going to have to be in specific units. But for right now, let's practice some of the simple gas laws. So let's take a look at this problem here. It says the volume of a gas occupies 12.5 liters at 1.17 atmospheres. The gas is then compressed to 8 liters. What is the new pressure? So what I'm looking for is a pressure of some sort. I have a V1 that is equal to 12.5 liters. I have a P1 that is equal to 1.17 atms. And then if I look here, I have a V2 that is equal to 8 liters. So if I wanted to solve this, I would need to use Boyle's Law because I have pressure and I have volume. So the way I would set it up is P1V1 equals P2V2, where I'm going to solve for P2. So if we write that out over here, I would get 1.17, and that 1.17 is in ATMs. All right, that would be my P1. My V1 would be 12.5, 
Hang on a second. Would be 12.5 liters. That would be equal to P2 and then the 8 in liters. Now I left the decimals off that, but you would put 0 0.00. So I would take 1.17 times 12.5, and then I would divide through by 8. And if you do that, you find that P2 equals 1.83 atmospheres. So again, multiply these two together, and then you would divide through by 8 to cancel the 8 on this side. That would give you P2. And if you solve this, you should get that P2 equals 1.83 atmospheres. So let's take a look at another one. A large tank contains 785 gas, uh, I'm sorry, liters of gas at 294 Kelvin and one atmosphere. The temperature increases to 301 Kelvin while the pressure stays at one atmosphere. What is the new volume of gas? So what you should notice here is that the atmosphere is one ATM and one ATM. And so those are going to cancel. They're being held constant. So what I really have is a V1, and the V1 is equal to 785 liters. And then I have a T1, and my T1 is equal to 294 Kelvin. And then if I look, it says the temperature increases. So I have a T2. The temperature is going to increase to 301 Kelvin. And then what does it ask for? It says, what is the new volume? So I'm going to need a V2. And that's what I'm really searching for. So I can accomplish this with Charles' law. And I can say V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, right? So let's go and fill these in. V1 and T1, we have those values. And then T2 we have, but we need V2. So let's go and fill each of these in. V1 would be 785. T1 would be 200. And 94. V2 is what we're looking for, and T2 would be 301 Kelvin. So what I would need to do is cross multiply. I have 785. I'm going to take that times the 301, and if I do that, it comes out to 236,000. 285, and that's equal to, if I cross multiply these two guys together, that's equal to V2 times 294 Kelvin. And so what I'll need to do is divide through by 294. That'll get rid of it on the V2 side. And if I divide through by 294 for my large number there, I'll find out what V2 is equal to. So I'll give you a second to put that in the calculator. And hopefully what you get is 804 liters. That's what V2 should come out to. So as you can see, this is basically simple algebra at the heart of these uh, simple gas laws. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, if you did a one with Avogadro's, it would work the exact same way. You would have moles and volume. You would hold the others constant. And then you would solve for the missing piece. So I hope that this video lecture was helpful for everyone. Please thumbs up, comment, like the video if it was useful. And then uh, please make sure to subscribe so that you know when new videos are being released. Thanks, guys.